enemy attempts to break through our defense screen. And the war has been carried to every single major city in the enemy's homeland. Here at home, order has begun to emerge from the chaos with a rapidity never believed possible. The homeless and injured are being cared for. Limited telephone service is being restored at a rapid rate. Civil defense welfare services have already established clearing houses and have begun to compile casualty lists for those seeking missing friends and relatives. That is all for now. Daddy! Daddy! I don't want to think about that. I want to think that he's safe and well, do you hear? Yes, Mother. Oh, there goes that poor kid again, Nancy. What's the matter with Mrs. Harvey lying in bed all day looking at the wall? She's convinced that her husband's dead, and so is she pretty near. She just doesn't care. And that other prize, Mrs. Moore. Thank heaven for Mr. Flutter, at least. Yes, he's sweet. He seems he used to go to sea for his mate on a lot of ships. Good morning, Libby. Good morning. Hi, I sir. Well, I hope you can have you all your stores laid in. I'll go get them for you. Bobby and I were up the first thing this morning. Laid in for the week, Skipper. I found these up in the attic. I thought you might be able to use them. Oh, I thought we'd sold those out years well, ago. they're in chip shape now, ladies. Thank you, Mr. Flood. It's good to have you aboard. Will you put them on the mantle? Yes. Mrs. Mitchell. Yes. Is there any ice yet in our refrigerator? No, the electricity hasn't been on long. Oh, my throat aches so. <laughs> <laughs> Kill Billy music. <laughs> Is that all I can give him? Why don't you write to your senator what's left of him? Oh, no, I mean, they, they never tell us anything, do anything. No, no, but they let gangs or hoodlums go roaming all over the landscape. Gangs? What gangs? I, I see them from the window. Crazy men wandering around, breaking into houses, and <laughs> we're left here to die. Little by little. Oh, how Mrs. Moore. <laughs> oh, yes. That's all a great big joke, isn't it? And meanwhile, my bones are burning away inside of me. And... Oh, pretty soon my, my, my hair will all start falling out. <laughs> Nobody believes me. I'll tell you this, I never signed up to be cast away on a desert island with that one. And that other one in there, Mrs. Harvey, going down just like a ship in the sea. We can all take a lesson from you. I mean, the way you keep going on, always well, looking around for what's to be done next. I'll give you this, that never have such big holes been knocked in the world as in these last few days. And there are those who say that there'll be no more tomorrows. Well, they're in for a big surprise, because tomorrow does come. Maybe it limps a little, maybe it crawls, but it does come. Question is, whether you want to be on board or just get left behind. Are you going out? Yes, I think it's safe enough now. I'm told they ain't hands bad down at the rescue center. Uh, see you later, ladies. Bye, Skipper. You know, Mother, even if the whole world was blown up, you'd find Mr. Flood out there the next morning with a hammer and nail. Oh, we've got to do something. Mrs. Harvey, you know you haven't washed that child's face since you got here? Oh, my husband. Dad. How can you know? In New York, when it happened. Dad. Oh, stop it. Think for once of your child. All right, if you won't. Nancy, come on. Let's wash your face and get this up. Come on. Please, sir. It's all too hope. I wasn't a babysitter for nothing. Come on in here, Jenny. Be careful. <laughs> My best dinner dress. Look at me, everybody. Isn't this scrumptious, Nancy? I'm going to a nightclub. Wouldn't you like to go? Just be up to, just be up to, please. Come on, Auntie. Oh, you want. Thank you, Bobby. Listen, from now on, I'll take care of the children. Ladies and gentlemen, in a moment you may hear an alert in your area. Do not be alarmed. Our patrols are merely checking on a plane that has failed to identify itself properly. Oh, ye gods and little fish! 
Because what's happening now? All right, Mrs. Moore. All right, that awful racket. Just checking on a plane. Oh, noise. Always oh, noise. Yes, Mrs. Moore. Next time we'll all have to pitch in and fight a quiet war. Yes, Alert. No, what bothers me? I, I just looked out of the window and what I saw what? Some awful looking men going across the back lawn to the kitchen door. Perhaps civil defense. Not those. I don't think my coat is just like that. It's not back yet. you want, say so. We'll give you what we can spare. Otherwise, I ask you to go away. Now look, the people in this house have done you no harm. They have trouble as enough of their own. Now, I ask you in the name of decency to go away. Decency? Oh, maybe they'll let me stay. Now look, I warn you, I have a gun. Don't force me to use it. I warn you, don't force me to use it. Thank you. Darkly, you're all wonderful. This thing, this, this awful thing. I can't tell you how I deplore this. I can't tell you how thankful I am. But may I ask? Oh, he just happened to drop in. Now, I'll be perfectly frank, Miss Mitchell. For the past several days, your daughter has been allowing me to stay in your cellar. He can't go back to his own place. He's in trouble. Walter. I know what I'm talking about. There was an announcement on the radio. No. Then he was to be located at once and brought to emergency headquarters. Now, I'll put everything straight. I am not popular with some of my fellow countrymen. And these bombings have done nothing to breathe me. I'm not sure I entirely understand you. Nor do I. Quite. I thought I'd found my life's work in this time. The purest of sciences. The investigation of our universe. Of matter. What held it together or drove it apart. Pure speculation. I worked with a pencil, scraps of paper, and my thoughts. Now, how, I reason, could that bring harm to even the smallest of God's creatures? And then I learned that my every thought was being turned to... To atomic theory? To the creation of the most destructive weapons the world has ever known. But, Doctor... I've been raised on certain principles among those... Thou shalt not kill. Not ever, not under any circumstances. And then I learned that every thought was being turned to me to destruction. As soon as I found that out, I gave up my work and I turned to teaching. I see. But, Mother, if he truly, honestly believes in passive oh, sure, and so wouldn't I like to. But all it takes is one hoodlum running wild in the streets, and what are we supposed to do? I've heard that argument before. But I'd always hoped that there'd be enough men of goodwill on all sides that they could get together in decency and reason. Fine. But we three stood here just a moment ago with the best will in the world, and then suddenly three men came in. But why did it have to happen? Why did I have to use this gun? Yes, why? But that's the way it did happen. And I'm only thankful that you took that gun in your hands and fired it. Otherwise, Those awful men! I still say I deplore it. Isn't that a luxury? That kind of sentimentality? Where would we all be if we decided to think that way? Oh. Mother, you're not going to say anything about that. Oh, Please, Please, Mother, please. Oh, Jim Turner, thank heaven. We heard a shotgun going off, then we nabbed a couple of hooligans trying to run away. Yes, from here, my husband's bird gun. You? Well, the fact is... Well, Annie Oakley, my hat's off to you. Well, you see, I... Yes? Thank you. Thank you for stopping by. Good night. Good night. I mean, good hunting. Mother? No, I didn't mention him. You, you mean he can stay? Come on in here, Doctor. No, I don't want to do anything that would cause your mother embarrassment. It's done now, Doctor Lee. Oh, no, from now on, no more Doctor Lee. Well, all those people here will have to give you a new name. What? From now on, you're Mr. Wallace, an old friend of Dad. Gary Wallace, oh, practically dear. a member of the family. Gary, meet Gladys. Gladys, meet Gary. Well. Well. <laughs> <laughs> 